What's going on guys and cows? My name is Matt. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to Matty Outdoors. We talk a ton of hiking and backpacking here. We talk hiking and backpacking tips and hiking and backpacking gear. And we do some hiking and backpacking trip videos up in the gorgeous Canadian Rockies. And today we are going to talk some hiking and backpacking myths. Now, a lot of these are things that you will probably see on YouTube or things you'll see in Facebook groups and hear from other people. I think a lot of it is just misinformation and people just not fully understanding some of the concepts and ideas out there. And I thought I would just kind of give you guys my ideas and my opinions on these things. So let's just dive in to some of these hiking and backpacking myths. I know hot tents are kind of the rage right now and everybody seems to love them. I, I like doing hot tent trips. I think they're a lot of fun, but I do think there is a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to hot tents, especially the portable packable ones that we're going to take out on backpacking trips as you can see here the stove itself is not very big and i think that's where people tend to go wrong and kind of get the wrong idea when it comes to these portable packable stoves and it's really got to do with the size of these stoves and the materials that they're made out of now this one here was made out of galvanized sheet metal but most of the packable stoves you're going to see that people carry out on backpacking trips are made out of titanium now I know some of you guys and gals are big into doing these pulk sledding trips and I personally am not a huge fan of a pulk uh, up here in the Rockies when you're going into the mountains and you're doing a lot of elevation gains and elevation losses. A sled is just simply not viable. Uh, if you've ever tried to haul a sled uphill and had a sled pushing you when you're going downhill, not an enjoyable time. So for me, everything I carry out on a backpacking trip goes on my back. So I need a smaller stove. I need a lightweight stove. I know YouTube tends to sensationalize and really promote the idea of hot tenting. And while it can be fantastic and it is a lot of fun, I think a lot of people looking into it and starting to get into it kind of have the wrong idea because simply put, the hot tent itself, like the stove, is a luxury item. It is not a necessity. The amount of wood that you're going to be able to pack into these, you're not going to get a very long burn time. The burn time on a stove like this, you're looking at about an hour to an hour and a half of good heat. And then the stove is not really going to be pumping out heat and you're not going to get any heat from it. So the idea of using this stove to keep yourself warm at night is not necessarily the way to look at it if you're looking into hot tenting. Like I said, this is more of a luxury item. Now, the stoves are fantastic for, you know, getting your shelter warm before you go to sleep and, you know, warming up in the morning before you crawl out of bed. But if you're looking at using something like this to keep yourself warm overnight, I hope that you've got a crew of people and you've got a good sleeping schedule because you are going to be up, like I said, every hour to hour and a half to continually stoke the stove and keep heat going into your tent. So if you are going out to do a backpacking hot tent trip, just know that you are still going to need a full winter sleep system that's going to keep you warm in the middle of the night, or you are going to continually be waking up cold. The next myth we're gonna talk about has to do with backpacking quilts. A lot of people seem to think that once you start getting into winter temperatures, a quilt is no good, and that is just simply wrong. Now, an adequately rated quilt compared to an adequately rated sleeping bag is going to keep you just as warm as long as you've got sufficient bottom insulation, be it an under quilt and a hammock or your sleeping pad if you're sleeping on the ground. Most people when it comes to winter camping just don't have the right bottom insulation underneath you and that tends to be where most of your heat loss comes from. But if you have say a zero degree or minus 18 Celsius rated top quilt compared to a zero degree or minus 18 Celsius rated sleeping bag, they are gonna keep you just as warm on the top a quilt is going to keep you just as warm. I personally do not use sleeping bags whatsoever anymore, even when it comes to sleeping on the ground in the middle of the winter. I exclusively use sleeping quilts and I will stack quilts and I'll take two 20 degree rated quilts or two minus seven Celsius quilts, stack them together and I will ride those down into minus 30. I have done that quite a few times and I was just as warm as my buddy sleeping in the same tent using a sleeping bag. So if you were a weight conscious backpacker and you're looking at getting into some winter camping and you've got you know your summer rated quilts, you've got a couple of them, don't be afraid of stacking quilts and taking quilts with you out in the winter time. I, I don't think a sleeping bag is necessary when it comes to winter backpacking. I think a quilt is gonna do you just fine. Now it's time to get into a little bit of controversy and I'm sure we are going to 
piss off all the bushcrafters out there. It seems to be a very popular opinion and idea that you need to be carrying some kind of flint striker and a ferrule rod with you out on a backpacking trip. And it's essentially just a rod that you know you take a flat edge. Most of them come with a little striker edge like this. You strike that on there and you know you strike that into a bundle of tinder and that will start your fire for you when you're out on a backpacking trip. Now, these can be fun to have. I mean, obviously I own one. They're fun to play around with. I have never actually carried one of these with me out on a backpacking trip in 20 years. All I have ever carried with me to start fires out on a backpacking trip has been the trusted Bic Mini. Now I carry a couple Bic Minis with me in my backpacking kit. I always have one on my person, you know, usually just tucked into a pocket, either zipped up or, you know, a pocket that's got a flap to make sure it's not going to bounce out of my pocket. And I've got usually two or three stashed in different places in my backpack. There's always one in my first aid kit. There's always one in my cook kit. And I've usually got one stuck with my electronics kit. A Bic Mini is very easy to operate. It's one of those things that anybody can operate. And if you've ever tried starting a fire with a ferrule rod, it's one of those things that does take some practice and it takes, you know, some, some knowledge and some know-how to do. But, uh, you know, you, you give a Bic Mini to a kid. And, you know, a five-year-old kid can start a fire with a Bic Mini. Even in the cold, these are going to work. The trick to using these in the cold is before you strike it, just, you know, put it on the inside pocket of your jacket or whatever, or just, you know, hold it in your hand a little bit, let it get warm, and they are going to strike up. They are going to work. Just a much easier way of getting a fire going for you when you're out on a backpacking trip. And I know people say that, you know, you need the ferrule rod for a survival situation. I almost guarantee you any survivalist out there or survival expert, when given a ferrule rod or given a Bic Mini lighter, they are going to go for the Bic Mini for ease of use over the ferrule rod almost every single time, you know, unless you're trying to shoot a YouTube video and impress the world by starting a fire with a ferrule rod. But uh, to me, when it comes to a survival situation out there in the backcountry, I would rather have a couple of these than a ferrule rod any day. Now, it would not be a Matty Outdoors video if we didn't talk a little bit about hammocks. And the big myth that I see when it comes to hammocks out in the backcountry has to do with the season we are getting into as we dive into the colder months and the winter season. And a lot of people seem to think that once you get into the colder months, hammocks are simply not viable. Now, after a couple of years of almost exclusively hammock camping, even in the frigid cold Canadian winters here in the Rockies, I can tell you guys that hammocks are absolutely viable as a cold weather sleep system. And I think a lot of the misconceptions when it comes to hammocks are just simply people not understanding that the fundamentals and sort of the dynamics of keeping warm in a hammock are exactly the same as keeping warm on the ground. You need to have sufficient coverage over top of you so your top quilt or if you want to lay a sleeping bag over top of you but the primary reason why people tend to get cold when it comes to hammocks and you know just sleeping in a hammock in general not even just winter time is the insulation underneath you now be it using a sleeping pad which will work in a hammock so you know using your winter rated sleeping pad underneath you or having a sufficiently rated under quilt tucked up underneath you keeping your backside nice and warm and making sure you've got your tarp pitched properly to block the wind from robbing that heat out of you is very, very key when it comes to staying warm in the winter time when sleeping in a hammock. At the start of this video, I talked about, you know, doing some videos on backpacking tips and tricks. And what I will do for you guys is I will pop a video right here for you on some backpacking tips that I have done in the past. So when you guys are done with this one, check out that video. I'll see you guys over there. As always, I'm Maddie. Thank you so dang much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.